What President Kennedy said was, we choose to go to the moon and do other things, not because it's easy, but because it's hard. The cost of failure is much higher than the cost of scrubbing. We, we have an obligation to get this right. This is a whole new vehicle, a whole new technology, a whole new purpose of going back to the moon in preparation to go to Mars. And yes, it's hard. The countdown to T minus zero starts approximately two days before launch. Teams inside the Launch Control Center have been working around the clock, powering up each section of the rocket and configuring the launch pad to support the 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust our moon rocket will generate at liftoff. It is a new creation. It is a new rocket and a new spacecraft to send humans to the moon um, on the very next flight. Today, we make history. With the launch of the most powerful rocket the world has ever seen, we are taking the first step in humanity's return to the moon. I can tell you there's an energy and there's an excitement around the Kennedy Space Center, I would say, across the agency and all around the Space Coast as we get closer and closer to this launch. This mission will validate that the rocket and capsule do perform as expected before future Artemis missions send astronauts to the lunar surface. We have worked really hard to get here. Uh, the team has done an absolutely outstanding job and we're up to the challenge and I'm really looking forward to a successful test flight. You are looking at the world's most powerful rocket and Orion spacecraft live on launch pad 39B. Artemis 1 embodies the hard work of thousands across the world determined to explore for the benefit of all. I'm Megan Cruz and this is NASA astronaut Kayla Barron. When I first walked up and saw the view from the desk here, I was just blown away. And this is the moment when it comes to the countdown. You know, and then tension starts and, well, let's cross fingers, everything works well. Yeah, tension is rising and we are fully excited here. Over the past few years, teams have put in thousands of hours performing simulations and rehearsals to ensure that they are ready for this moment. As our zero hour approaches uh, for the Artemis generation, we do have a heightened sense of anticipation and there's definitely excitement amongst the team members. We've noticed uh, just the overall mood and focus within the team is, is definitely a positive one. Now with all systems configured correctly, the launch director gives the final go for liftoff. On behalf of all the men and women across our great nation who have worked to bring this hardware together to make this day possible, and for the Artemis generation, this is for you. At this time, I give you a go to resume count and launch Artemis 1. This mission goes with a lot of hopes and dreams of a lot of people. It's no longer the Apollo generation. It's the Artemis generation. And that brings a whole new world of discoveries. T minus 50 seconds and counting. The Space Launch System is now counting down to lift off of Orion on its maiden voyage to the moon. And here we go. Ten, Hydrogen one, burn off igniters three, initiate. Two, Seven, six, five, four stage engine start. Three, two, one. And lift off of Artemis One. We rise together back to the moon and beyond.
if you're just joining us, welcome to NASA's Kennedy Space Center where we just watched Artemis One launch, our first step towards our next adventure into deep space. With Orion off the ground, Mission Control in Houston takes the reins. Our nation is returning to the moon. And we have worked hard as a team. You guys have worked hard as a team for this moment. This is your moment. It is not by chance that you are here today. So I want you to look around, look around at this team and know that you have earned it. You have earned your place in the room. You've earned this moment. You have earned your place in history. The successful launch of SLS is just the beginning. Orion will spend the next several weeks journeying around the moon sending flight data back to teams here on Earth for real-time analysis. During its mission, Orion reached speeds traveling about 30 times as fast as the speed of sound. This dramatic uh, video of the Earth-Moon transit that took place showed uh, and punctuated the fact that uh, we were pressing away from uh, our home planet to a distance of some 268,000 miles away from Earth, further than any human-rated spacecraft had ever traveled, for a spacecraft designed to return humans to Earth, eclipsing the mark uh, set by the Apollo 13 vehicle back in 1970. After several weeks of flight, it was time for Orion to return home. A half century later, NASA's newest moon explorer, the Orion spacecraft, is barreling its way back home after circumnavigating the moon and beyond in an elliptical distant retrograde orbit. Now less than two hours away from splashing down in the Pacific Ocean, west of Baja, California, to complete its shakedown mission. Like the Apollo missions of the past, Orion will have to endure incredibly high temperatures during re-entry of Earth's atmosphere. A journey that began uh, with the power of the launch of the Space Launch System 25 and a half days ago, about uh, to reach its final minutes in the searing heat of re-entry, where temperatures around Orion will build up to 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit. While re-entering Earth's atmosphere, the spacecraft slowed to about 300 miles per hour. As it continued its descent, Orion's parachute system, containing 11 total parachutes, deployed once it reached approximately 9,000 feet and a speed of about 130 miles per hour. And there it is, high over the Pacific, America's new ticket to ride to the moon and beyond now in view. Orion under its chutes descending towards splashdown. These parachutes help slow the crew module to a much more manageable speed, roughly 20 miles per hour, for a water landing off the coast of California. Splashdown. From Tranquility Base to Taurus Littrow to the tranquil waters of the Pacific, the latest chapter of NASA's journey to the moon comes to a close. Orion, back on Earth. got a perfect view, a front row seat to the Orion splashdown. And it's simply beautiful out here. That is a human rated capsule that went around the moon yep. and returned and is now in the Pacific Ocean. I think I can speak for the whole dive team that we're honored to be part of history and to be part of something so monumentous and just ready, just ready and excited to go out and do this. When Orion was deemed safe to approach, Team members jumped into the water and attached hardware that's steady to the capsule. What we do at NASA it really is all about collaborations and the collaborations that we've had with the uh, Department of, the De of Defense in particular over the past 
uh, many, many years. Their hard work and their dedication as they uh, went through a great deal of planning, um, hardware development and processes, and a lot of practicing uh, to get to this point and make it uh, look easy. And that team, made of a combination of NASA and Department of Defense personnel, has put in years of work to make sure that they were ready. Melissa Jones, the recovery director, just uh, came from outside the ship's control center where she was uh, monitoring and, of course, uh, managing her team in the midst of this recovery. So, Melissa, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. It's, it's been a, a long time coming. We've been working this mission for a while and we've done a ton of training. And every time you do training with a mock-up capsule, you don't have any of that. You don't have parachutes. You don't you know, here coming back to the atmosphere, the sonic booms and all that kind of stuff. And today that actually happened. Uh, it's just amazing. You know, this mission, the spacecraft and this team exceeded all expectations. For the last 25 and a half days, we've been every day looking ahead to the next flight to see how we can improve on where we are today so that we can fly a safe and successful mission with our astronauts next time around. Once stabilized, the team secured the spacecraft with hardware and rope assemblies and towed it to the Navy ship. The dive team then connected Orion to a series of ropes from inside the back of the ship, known as the well deck, to safely and securely pull the capsule inside. With Orion safely secured inside the ship, teams made their way to Naval Base San Diego where the capsule was offloaded and prepped for its cross-country trip back to its home base, Kennedy Space Center. This is really the start of a campaign of, of several missions uh, to, to, to get uh, humans back to the moon and beyond to Mars. So there's still a lot to be done, and, and this is just the beginning. Uh, Kennedy uh, just uh, stunned everybody with the Apollo generation. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out. And said that we were going to achieve what we thought was impossible. Of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. Many things have happened since, but we knew we were going back. This is the, the program of going back to the moon to learn, to live, to invent, to create, in order to explore beyond. So it's, it's a new day, a new day has dawned, and Artemis generation is taking us there.